Like, look at this. Look at this. This is all it's going to be. I swear. It's the ugliest thing. <laughs> it's just so horrible. All the roads carry sewage and low power. So you don't have to sit there and paint in these, uh, these connections with water and sewage and all that anymore. So I really appreciate that. That, that, is, that is a fantastic, fantastic thing. Welcome to City Skylines 2. My name is Impra, and we will be checking this out today. Not on stream, but also off stream on YouTube. Well, actually, I'm going to upload this. Today, we're going to start a entirely new map. My main city has gotten somewhere, and I don't even remember which map I picked to play that. So, I don't know, what, what looks interesting? I think I played this. Tempere. Yeah, that looks what I... That looks like what I've been playing. I think, I think, I think... We'll go with Twin Mountain. That sounds quite interesting. To my mind, anyway. So... Let us go with that. I dare say. Let's just select the map. And we'll take the European theme, though you can switch it around while you play. We'll keep the natural disasters on, though... I don't know, so far they haven't done much. We'll keep the tutorials disabled because they are a little bit intrusive and honestly they're not even that super helpful. City name, let's just roll the dice a little bit. Nokomis. Sounds great to me. So, uh, natural resources available. Fertile land, forest, some ore, some oil. Uh, the connections, there's no trains here. Well, at least no outside connections. You can still build trains. Just not to the outside world. It is sunny and rainy. This is something you should definitely keep an eye out. Because rainy means very, very rainy. <laughs> uh, you, you, can, you can easily get a little bit... Well, sick of the rain, really. Minus 4 to 15 degrees means there will be snow. Which is also a little bit difficult to navigate, just visually speaking. But let's get going. So performance-wise, we talked about it last stream. They put out a notice that it's going to have bad performance, which I think is a bold move. It, it's uh, it's an interesting step to take. Not quite sure who came up with that, but I'll say um, it's an interesting little gambit. So what are we looking at? We're looking at the Twin Mountains, which... Okay, that's... <laughs> That looks great there. What is that? Okay, that's just a... What is that? Pagedale. Outside connection point. Okay. Alright, so that's for, for planes. There's a plane already. <laughs> this looks horrible. Come on, people. Come on. So I think one of the reasons the performance is as it is, is that the whole map is on top water. You can see that sometimes if you build deep, like a tunnel or whatnot, there's just water everywhere underneath. And I think that's part of what kills the performance. So I'm not playing everything on high, and uh, you'll see some interesting stuff happening a little later. For now, we have our one connection to the city. We have very little to work with, quite honestly, only electricity and stuff. But by building more, we level up and we get to build more. So let's uh, start. Sadly, or luckily... We start out with a roundabout, though it's a very small one. Look, look, look how tiny that boy is. Look at it. It's so cute. But we'll definitely put the roundabout there at the entrance of our city. Hey, good evening. It's going well. Thank you. How about yourself? Let's see. Oh, I should ch turn chat on. There we go. Um, right. So we need electricity, of course. And I think I'm going to start out with wind turbines. For the very early bit, that's perfectly fine and enough. And they're not too terrible. I don't think you need to actually turn them properly, but I'm not too shaft about... Due to the elevation where we're putting them, 
we're not getting the maximum anywhere in our city limits. So, okay, that's out the window. Now, the next option, of course, would be a small coal power plant. That's interesting. This might be coal or something. Uh, but look at the arrows, the wind, the wind direction. This is going to blow smoke places. So we'll need to put this right over here across the river, honestly. Um, so it's it blows in this direction for now. Meaning we will build our industry in this direction and our living stuff in this direction, basically, to avoid them getting the air pollution. Though eventually we'll move it all around. So, But to start, we'll put it across the river. Or, you know... Bridges are expensive. Let's not put it across the river. Let's just put it kind of at the edge here. That's also quite, quite far. Ah, choices, choices. Here should be fine for now. So watch that. This is very little small blinking road symbol. Uh, so we want to be sure that we can actually attach a road to it. So we turn it in the right way. All right. Now let's connect it up. And connect it up with power. Well, high voltage power, anyhow. Which we're going to run underground. Because I don't like how these look. Don't like him in real life. Don't like him in the game. So, that's how we're going to do it. 16 gigabyte of RAM. Is that okay to play this game? Uh, you know what? Let me check. Right now, how much is it using for me? It is using around 6 gigabytes for me at this moment. So, might be enough, but I do have 32, just full disclosure. Okay, so I don't actually need a big road here. So, let's, let's put this down. And sadly, uh, the... Okay, so we made it smaller. The road connection stays. You can see this asphalt here connecting up it grew out basically but the power connections they didn't come with so we'll have to put these again and it's just as simple as pulling it like this uh this one doesn't connect to anything though so we can just destroy that let's go on the ground but honestly at the moment i'm not even sure you should buy it just in the state it's in not saying it's terrible or anything but uh Especially on the simulation end, there is a bunch of uh, chatter and discussion, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with the prices, how, how PCs have been priced for the last, I don't know, two years, three years. It's, uh, it's not super surprising that a lot of PCs aren't new, as you say, anymore. Just hardly affordable, is it? So, okay, so we got our power situation up and now we start with some zoning. We'll put our first living quarters out over here. And we'll throw down another feeder road this direction here. Just use up the space and our little friendly little roundabout. Not going to need much early out, but we'll build some. So, let's go here. It won't be ideal what I'm doing here, so it's just, you know, for the enjoyments. And whoop, all there. So, that's a simple living spot. We could also use the new grid feature, which I think is pretty neat. So, if we pull this from here, no, uh, from here to here. And then down. See what I mean? You can see the water here popping up beneath, right beneath. It's everywhere. It's underneath the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that has some performance implications. So we do that. And we upgrade this road back to large because I don't want the small road here. Boop. Boop. Now. Uh, I'm a big fan of roundabouts, so we'll put them at all the T-junctions, at least. Uh, though inside here, that doesn't matter too much. Now, for the zoning, let's get going on that. 
Um, we'll build... So, there's ways of doing it as they used to be there, yeah? So you can just fill it in like this, get the whole block if it's connected. Uh, you can get a paint thing, which, interestingly enough, doesn't even have, like, any any size. So it's just one cell at a time. Or you can get this marquee tool where you can pull them out. Now, something interesting about that is, first of all, we want it mixed a little bit. So we don't want to just have living quarters here. But also interesting is the lot size uh, determines not just how big it is, but also how expensive it is for the people to live there. So if you give a small lot like that, that's going to be a very small house. And it's inexpensive. People can better afford it than pulling out the whole thing like that. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. It's, it's a little bit micromanagey. You, you probably don't have to go into that. But uh, I think it's it's a it's an interesting feature, um, honestly. And another thing, if you go for commercial zone, uh, you can press I to turn off the I burn here, so you can see something. Uh, but some information goes away, so keep that in mind. So for the commercial zones, the size also determines what it's going to be. So a four by four might be a gas station. Uh, something a little bit bigger like this might be a convenience store or something. So uh, I think that's really, really, really quite interesting, uh, honestly. Uh, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. So we'll put down a few smaller, smaller uh, type commercial buildings here at the center. We don't want to fill in a whole block because, uh, first of all, commercial zones generate some noise pollution. So that's not great. Uh, second of all, they need a high density of people to properly generate customers. Uh, so if you if you just fill in the whole thing blue over here, they're going to complain <laughs> about not having customers. So let's uh, get going with all this in mind. For these, I don't care too much. For the green, we'll just go there. Uh, hi, welcome. No problem. Let me read that out loud just uh, for anyone who might have, you know, on, on the YouTube some issues with audiovisual stuff. Um, all right. Okay. That is, boy, that is spam. Well, sorry. Goodbye. Man. Always so exciting, you know, if, you, if you're small. If you have a channel of like three people <laughs> and someone comes in and starts talking to you, you always get a little bit a little bit excited. Ah oh, no, I ban them. I don't care. It's 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 bad business. I don't see I don't see the point. They don't they don't ex oh no 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 no. This is not what I wanted to do. Uh they are not valid to me. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Glad we agree. See, and why would I bother with with bot like that if I got actual people right there? I know. So you can also see the grayed out area is what you can't fill in anymore. Or if you fill it in, it's not going to be filled because it doesn't have a connection to the road, which I think is pretty darn cool, honestly. Another thing we might try, because we already have this little gap here. Uh, if we go here, we can build the pathways. And I do love me some pathways. So we'll lose a little bit at the back end here. But this way... Uh, pedestrians can just walk doo -doo 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 -doo, all the way here. And um, that way, people have a bit of an easier time to get around. And if you build them early, it's just going to be that much less of a hassle, I think. And what's also very cool is uh, if you build it like that, close enough, it auto-generates a crossing, pedestrian crossing, which is nice because... We are probably gonna wanna. Nah, they have enough crossings here. That's that's fine. Yeah, I always forget. Like I start a new game, I really want to do it, and then I'm in a few hours, and then I just forget, and I just spam everything full. <laughs> it's horrible. I'm not good at this. Uh, let's let's throw another one here, and we'll go all the way across. Basically, it can even pull across the roads. It just generates you the uh, the walkways. I, I really love that. They, honestly, compared to City Skylines 1, this is such an improvement. It's crazy. 
it's crazy. There's so many good quality of life improvements. And the main city I started since it came out is at 125,000 people and it still runs. Uh, granted, it crashed earlier, but um, it still runs. So I'm I'm quite I'm quite psyched. I'm quite psyched. And I don't even have the best system in the world either. Uh, I just recently got a new graphics card. I, I do admit that, but apart from that, it's not too big. All right, let's fill in these. That should be enough for the start. And let's think of. Uh, oh yeah, I, I got a. AMD 7800 XT for way too much money. But I figure, you know, I'm going to upgrade the next time in like 10 years. So might as well. So we're going to build this out to hit here because these small power lines, they only carry so much current and they do generate uh, bottlenecks eventually. So pulling it out like that might help us down the road. Not that this area is going to be a problem, but, you know, generally speaking. All right, so we got a little bit of commercial coming in. We got a little bit of people coming in. Uh, we can already unpause this. I'm thinking real quick. Yeah, 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 we can unpause this. And we'll build a uh, industry thing over here. Yeah, I got a 6,700 first, uh, but that thing had the worst coil wine. I, I, could, I could not concentrate anymore. It was just so bad. So I returned it and it was kind of right around the corner when the 7800, uh, 7800 released. So I figured, okay, if I'm investing already, invest big and just get the upgrade. So I have less time, you know. <sighs> yeah, I mean, coil issues are a thing. What really annoyed me was uh, the vendor and everyone were, was like, oh yeah, coil, coil wine? Yeah, that's not that's not an RMA issue. Hey, Gundefeld, welcome back. How are you doing? Um, it got me really annoyed because th both the vendor and um, and the manufacturer were like, yeah, coil wine, that's just something you have to live with. That's not an RMA issue. I'm like, oh, is it? So I asked them uh, to provide me in writing in their, in their policies where it says that coil wine is excluded from warranty. Uh, interesting enough, no one wanted to provi provide me that, <laughs> but I already put in like a, a complaint with um, with uh, consumer protection and stuff like that because f f it's it's a it's a four hundred card, four hundred euro card. You know, it's crazy. Why is coil wine not an RMA issue? Like I I bought. I bought a thing that is supposed to render graphics on my computer. I did not buy a thing that is supposed to repel rodents from entering my garden with the noise it makes. You know, if I want that, I can get it much cheaper. So I feel like um, consumers have been really browbeaten on this issue uh, to, to just be like, oh, yeah, you have to accept it. Uh, no, I haven't been. What causes it? Okay, so coil wine... <laughs> Not not talking about City Skyline here, but coil wine um, is basically it's vibration. Uh, coils are literally what what they are. It's it's a it's a tight coil of uh, copper or some similar such um, uh, thing that conduces uh, power, and depending on the frequency where it runs through, yeah, um, basically the megahertz. Uh, depending on that frequency where it runs through the coil. If the coil is kind of shitty quality, and if it's not properly glued or uh, padded or whatever they can do, um, this is what the wine is. It's it's literally just a physical vibration of the coil. Um, so yeah, it's uh, that's all it is. So to me, saying okay, yeah, all electrical uh, items has have that. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. I had a GTX 1070 for seven years. Not a peep out of thing. I had um, a 9, 970 before that. I had a uh, 4080 before that. I had a 7070 before that or after that. None of these ever had coil wine. Not a single one. So, yeah. I know modern cards have way much higher frequency. So, there's a whole lot more going on there. Uh, but, pff, come on now. 
What is this? I'm a customer. I, I'm not a dope. Yeah. And it can be really, really loud. Like, super annoying. So, I'm definitely not one to uh, take that. Alright, more pedestrian road walks. It's not so important in industry uh, areas, but you'll see a lot of uh, people still taking, going for the foot traffic route. There is a uh, specific um, pedestrian street, which I really, really like. I build these a lot and I fully, say, oh, oh boy, we forgot uh, sewage and water. Whoops. <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying it a lot, I must say. And it is very different. Honestly, uh, well, <laughs> it looks the sim. It looks the same, uh, almost the same, but it plays very different. It has a lot of uh, quality of life improvements that I really liked. Uh, for example, let's put down this pump station here to get some water, or let's check if there's a groundwater thing we can get. Okay, there's some groundwater. Let's get the groundwater instead. Uh, so we'll put this thing uh, here. Right there. Um, but a lot of quality of life stuff is, is so much vastly different that it's uh, absolutely worthwhile to get, I think. Though the performance issues are real. And it might be worthwhile to wait a little bit longer. Uh, plus, I read a bunch of stuff about how the economic simulation isn't real or anything. But, eh, you know. I didn't mind. Okay, let's uh, get some outpouring sewage going as well. And this needs to connect it up. Luckily, this thing doesn't need power anymore. Thank the Lord for that one. Like, this is what I mean, you know? Uh, all the roads carry sewage and low power. So you don't have to sit there and paint in these, uh, these connections with water and sewage and all that anymore. It's just instantly it's there. And once the game realizes, boop, 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 all done. And all we did was connect up the sewage. That's literally all we did. Um, so I really appreciate that. That That is that is a fantastic, fantastic thing. Uh, so people are moving in, of course. Let me show you the pedestrian road here. So this thing here, pedestrian street, uh, a street where only foot traffic is allowed, apart from service and delivery vehicles. I love that thing. It, it's literally just for people, uh, except for some minor uh, other 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 road services and vehicles. So let's pull this out to here, into the district, into the district, and look at all the information we're getting while pulling this out. You see the angles at the starting point, you see where it crosses, you see uh, elevation change across the range, you see how long it is, you see how long, how much it costs, you see where it lines up with something. Like, just look at all this. That is fantastic. Uh, the two circles show you where the building uh, tiles show up. It's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy with this. Honestly, it's, it's a good game. I spend way too much time on it already. Plus, okay, so that's possibly a minus to people, but to me, it's honestly, it's a, it's a plus. Um, even though this says we're losing money, we're probably never going to run out. Like, I've never run out of money. It just somehow magically keeps going back. <laughs> it's weird. So there's probably some issues still that need to be uh, figured out, but... Well, I don't mind. I'm having fun, and that's all that matters. Alrighty, so we can pull, definitely can pull a walkway through here. And I'll show you something neat in a while once, we, once we've unlocked it uh, on how to manage uh, crossings and stuff. You can put stop signs, you can put um, traffic lights, you can deny directions, like stuff that was only a mod in City Skylines 1 is just part of the game now. And I really love it. So a lot of pedestrian stuff. Now one more thing for pedestrians. No, we actually don't need it. If they want to walk, they can walk there and it's safe. Let's upgrade this to the pedestrian road as well. So it's a little bit more symmetrical. 
and you can pull upgrades. Like I, I clicked it twice, like I'm used to from City Skylands 1, but I could have just pulled up as well and it works really, really well. I've run in only very few issues that are annoying and confusing and not fun. But the majority of stuff is great. So I was talking about the tiles earlier, right? So let's zoom in here. We got some small tile things. I, might, I think these might have been too big. There's a plastics cellar, which is interesting. Like there's just a shop for plastics. Like if you want to buy plastic, go to that shop. They, they sell you plastic. <laughs> No, no, they require... Uh, no, actually, they say plastic. It's, what the heck is this? Uh, look at the graphics now. So this happens. If you zoom in a little bit and you stay at it, uh, then the graphics just... The, the, the textures just do this. Look at the car. Like, if you can live with that kind of stuff, uh, it's fine. No, you cannot drive cars, but you can pick a car and you can click on it and then you follow it around while it drives through your city. So you can go right real low and just have a little drive through of your uh, city there. Except the polygons, like look at the textures. It's just, I don't have any adaptive graphic settings or anything on. So this is not trying to uh, look a certain way, but it's like, that's the kind of jank that's still in there. But personally, I don't mind. I, I like it to run properly. Uh, and it, it sure does that for me. Okay, let's try and get a gas station, maybe. So they are crying out for more living spaces and more stuff. So we'll do a real small one here. Just 4x4 four four and one 2x1. One, and another 4x4 four four and another 4x4. Four four. Let's do these. And let's see what they become. Yeah, I don't... I, I mean, I can show you my settings real quick. Uh, just so we're clear on how it's set up for me. So I got the 1044p full screen windowed. Um, we got VSync on, which I don't know if we necessarily need it, but VSync can help prevent coil wind. So that's <laughs> potentially interesting. Uh, depth of field, definitely turn that off. Like that's a huge resource hog. Um, dynamic resolution scale, uh, scale quality is disabled. So that's not a problem. Uh, clouds quality, I keep down. I, I don't look at cloud all that much, so why would it be up, you know? Uh, fog quality for volumetrics is low. Ambient occlusion quality is high, high, high. Uh, reflections quality goes down. I don't care about that all that much. Depth of field quality, honestly, we might turn this to disabled. Uh, motion blur, definitely turn that off. Why is this in such a game? Why would, why? Why is there motion blur in this? Why? Uh, shadows, I always turn to low. I never really notice it. And shadows is, ever since I started gaming like 25 years ago, shadows is the thing, you know? <laughs> Motion blur. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, water quality is down to medium because that's also just reflection stuff. And honestly, if you put it on high speed, it looks like garbage anyway. So why would you uh, take the resource hit there? Level of detail and all that I like to keep high. So now you know my settings. Uh, I can't tell you why this is happening. I, no idea. Uh, again, I don't mind, but you might. So keep it in mind. If, if, if this is something that upsets you, if you don't like it, if you can't deal with it, don't get it yet. All right. So something I learned from City Skylines 2 is that these don't mean anything. Like you can get a bit more um, information here. So people want to move here because uh, they are jobs, people are happy, but there are unoccupied buildings. Now, let's have a quick look around. There's no unoccupied building. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, rain causes frame rate issues? Maybe. I've played with rain and snow. I didn't notice that much. But uh, again, I, I've been playing with the settings we have. So we unlocked the first milestone. Uh, we constantly generate uh, XP to up unlock these both by building stuff and by just people coming in and being happy about being here. So you always get some money and it's not little, that's a lot of money. Uh, you also get whatever that is. Uh, oh no, that means you can buy three more tiles on the map uh, and you get a skill point, I call them. And now we can unlock something new. And something I want you to know, I want you to listen for 
uh, is the sound design on the interactions, not the music or anything, which is currently off for some reason. Let me check. I actually had it on. Did I not? No, it's all fine. I did turn off the radio. It's it's very repetitive and it's not interesting or fun, nor is what they're talking about actually true. So, so you unlock a bunch of stuff, but listen listen to how the menu is designed. Like this sounds nice. This is a nice sound the whoo, as it goes up. The clicking here, and when we build something, you immediately get this chime for the uh, for the XP. Uh, we'll we'll see in a moment. So let's, for example, start with a little medical clinic. We'll put this on the main road here, on the center, and now we build this. Listen to that sound. Ring. It's just the positive feedback throughout this sound design of this game is really really something i must say like this is this is something extra uh so yeah that's um i think that's one of the main reasons i've been playing it so much it's just yeah it's very subtle but it reinforces almost everything you do everything you do has a nice little you know just they're really nice little sounds uh, that, that works really well, at least with my brain chemistry. <laughs> so, uh, we got a point. If we click on this now, we can unlock stuff. And um, it doesn't really matter much where we start. Like, you might have a direct idea, like you want to go for, let's say, emergency battery station or on recycling. You can't afford it anyway right now. Could go for a crematorium instead of graveyard from day one could go for anything else. What we are going to go for is advanced road services. That's the most interesting thing early on, in my opinion, because it can do all the things that I just talked about. Now, this here, um, this here is our entry roundabout. People come and go from the city. So what I don't want here, see, you get all this stuff, which was mods. You know, these were mods. All of this. And now it's just the first unlock immediately. So we want to do something. We want to remove this crosswalk here. So we just select this road and this crosswalk also. We don't need that. And we just right click, right click, gone. No more crosswalks. People can still get over. They can just walk around here or walk down here and cross there or whatever. But that's it. We want it back, left click, bam. Gone, right click, done. Crazy. It's, it's just crazy. And you can really fine-tune this. You can really, really fine-tune this. Uh, now, you can't deny people right-of-ways on, on a roundabout because it's a roundabout. <laughs> That's how roundabouts work. But if we were to, say, uh, remove the roundabouts in here, you know, like, uh, say we don't like that, uh, go over ground and select the inner circle. That removes only the roundabout. So say we remove that. And we're like, okay, uh, we don't want anyone to upset people driving left all the time like we only allow right turns so we can just go ahead disallow left turn click that here you can see the road marking go change done same thing here only one direction and then anyone who wants to change direction can just go in this roundabout change road side and go that way then we feel like okay i don't want traffic lights here stop sign bam uh it's it's a bit silly because uh, literally like, okay, this, the side roads, I don't know if you can actually decide who gets the stop signs, like which direction gets it. I think everyone has a stop sign now. So that's a little bit silly. <laughs> you know, that's not how stop signs work, but um, it comes down to basically everyone waiting and left for right, uh, left before right works. This is all there. Day one. You know, and this is the stuff that kept City Skylines 1 down. I think, for the most part. Personally, I don't like playing with mods all that much because th they require extra uh, attention, extra maintenance uh, when when versions change and all that. So I don't really like them. But boy, howdy. Are these functionalities, if they're baked in, so important and making the game so much better? Really, like they, they did a really, really good thing here. Absolutely. Uh, right, so we unlocked some new zoning stuff. We got uh, EU medium density. Now, 
you can set the uh, environment, the, the theme early, but you can switch around. So instead of building EU medium density houses, we can mix it. We can go ahead and, and just put some uh, US medium density housing here. And we're going to do that. We'll put some over here. Now, something interesting about uh, medium and low density housing, they start kind of excluding each other. So people in low density housing are not going to like living very close to medium density, density housing. So we'll just take this square and throw some more low density American style and some more low density European style over here. And then we wait for these to be built. Again, the demands if you can you can you can pretty much ignore honestly it's um it's neither accurate nor important, but something I do suggest is mixing in so if we just build a big square of uh, commercial zone, that's gonna upset people living here. but if we just throw in a few like this and like that now this is gonna be easier to handle every for everyone around just sprinkled in there. They're going to have customers and the people living there are going to have to deal with much less noise, much less traffic. So that's pretty good. So we can deal with all these demands a little bit, but not make it too big. See, and now population increased, immediate XP. This goes up to 20, I think. And you can see the wind direction there blowing the smoke in a certain direction. It's not super visible because the wind isn't too strong here. But if we look at the air pollution, you can see how it pushes everything in that direction. And the coal power plants actually being a big of a big problem. Now these generate ground pollution more than anything. Uh, but in this density, it's not too bad yet. Noise pollution, that's that's a bigger thing from these. So you still don't want to put people right next to it. Uh, you still want to gap it out a little bit. But that's perfectly fine. People will get around still. So what else do we have? Uh, death care. Yes, we need a... Oh boy. <sighs> Frame rate tanking until we put down the cemetery. We're going to put it here, but with some distance to the main street. For the... Actually, we're going to put it on the main street. But with distance both to the crossing and just put it out a little bit. Reason being, if we ever want to upgrade this road, like the medical clinic here, that's not in a good spot. That is not in a good spot. If we want to put a roundabout here, that's going to be in the way. So honestly, we're going to move it right away, uh, which costs us a little bit, $7,500. But uh, look, at, look at the money we got. That's not a problem. So this way, we have a little bit more leeway in upgrading both uh, road size and uh, roundabouts later. So that's something to keep in mind. Of course, zoned buildings you can just overwrite and destroy, that, that's no problem, but buildings that you place, that's how it goes. That is how it goes. Now happiness, pff, I never really done much about it. I like to keep everything green. That's another great design thing uh, that was already in City Skylines 1, but it's really neat here. Uh, like. All these pretty colors, you know, you just, okay, people are happy, people are unhappy. Uh, let's do something. <laughs> let's make them happy. We're not going to build a landfill. Um, we are currently exporting our garbage. If we look at our uh, taxation and income here, uh, we don't see it yet. But once this is unlocked on uh, a large village milestone, we're going to see that we're currently exporting. And again, look at the money. Like we're losing uh, almost 70,000 per month. So you'd think, you'd think that we can only last another 10 months, right? It never happens. Like I can't keep spending because with every up upgrade, you get new money in the bank. So it's just, I don't know. You would really, really have to try. Uh, and, and keep building and building and building and not get anything that can return you anything. Yeah, it's it's a little bit odd. Uh, also, what I really don't like, uh, on a negative point, uh, buildings like that, you know, the... Oh, finally, we got a, look, we got a gas station. Finally. <laughs> uh, bomber fuel, petrochemicals. So, something I noticed, which is really odd, 
is these companies eventually they might go and be like, okay, we can't we can't afford rent anymore. Can't afford it. But what they're doing is they just yell at you. They just sit there and they can't afford it. But they never go bankrupt. They never go down. Like a person, if they can't afford rent, eventually they're going to leave and the house is going to be empty. And then you might have to tear it, tear it down or it goes down by itself and then someone else pops up. But businesses, they just stay forever. Yeah, they sh they should vac there should be a vacancy just like with uh, living, I think. I absolutely agree there. Now, another thing I don't like compared to City Skylines 1 is how the districts worked. Uh, we can't build any yet, but uh, I'll show you later. It's it's weird. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, or it, it just doesn't do anything much, so you can just as well ignore it. It's um, Maybe they flesh it out later, but at the moment they're basically pointless, in my opinion. I mean, you can do some things with it, but not much. Now, what I really like... Once you've got things a little bit rolling, you know, about these games, you can just kind of watch. I don't know. I, I do this. I set the camera to some interesting angle where I see a lot of stuff and uh, the cranes in the distance, you know. And then I just kind of watch for a little bit, see for things popping up. Of course, with one square, we can't find a really good angle yet, but uh, it's fine. There's a lot of lovely details in here. Uh, obviously, everything is a little bit cookie cutter, but let's... Let's see the difference between American uh, low density and European. So this is European. So European's low density means, uh, well, City Skylines is not developed by Americans, which, which confuses me a little bit because honestly, when I go through my low density zoned uh, housing around here in the city, there are some, but very few single story, single family houses. They almost don't exist compared to two or three story uh, single homes, um, which is kind of weird, but maybe that's a country thing. Uh, now let's look at the American ones. And they are similar, but they don't have sellers, <laughs> for example. So they are up on stilts. They have these uh, crawl spaces, which is something that European houses have very seldom. Uh, generally, we tend to have sellers. So there's a lot of foundation going on and we don't sit on stilts. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, mobile homes is also a big thing uh, for Americans. Yeah, that's true. That, that's I mean, that's becoming more of a thing, I think, in Europe. But uh, for now, it really isn't. So I don't remember. What did we put down? American style? Low, I think. Yeah, these are American. Definitely. Look at all the ACs out on the windows. This is American style. <laughs> you don't get that in Europe. Um Let's put some medium density Europeans next to it. So we had European selected and we'll just, we'll fill this in, that's fine. Right there, right there and right there. And now we'll add some more low density as well on the edges here. So that's how I like to go. Uh, center is more high medium density. And then at the edges, because uh, again, they don't like living next to each other. Uh, at the edges, then you get the the lower density. And again, always think about maybe putting a little bit of uh, commercial zoning in there. Just not a lot. Just don't overdo this. This is key for a happy populace. So let's throw in some more people here. Now, the only drawback on roundabouts is that you can't build here. So you might reconsider that in your living uh, areas. Eventually, you're probably not going to need it anymore, but for now. So is anyone using our walkways yet? Not really. Well, it's a very small town. The, the car sounds are also really, really weird. Like, what car sounds like this? What car in the world sounds like that? What's that supposed to be? That's a little bit more, you know? Yeah, but these, the regular ones? What is that? If my car sounds like that, I'm taking it to the mechanic. That doesn't sound right. There's <laughs> something wrong with that. Definitely don't want it to sound like that. 
<laughs> it's just kind of weird. So depending on the depth of the houses, like how much you allocate to them, they're going to have a garden or not. So I think that's uh, kind of cute. If you really want to landscape it, there, you, you can make a whole theory out of it. Like if you don't want a lot of these sides there that are just empty, um, you, you can try and work around that. But I just like how it grows, whichever way it wants to grow, you know. So these people are wealthy. We are increasing toward happiness. Unre unreliable healthcare coverage. Now this is the bane of my existence in this game. Uh, and I don't, I haven't found a, I haven't found a fix yet. I mean, look at this. We have zero vehicles in use. Uh, they have enough pharmaceutical on storage. They have zero patients. But people will continually be annoyed with not having enough uh, healthcare. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. If we look at the view as well, if we look at this, the houses. They're a little bit orange, you know, but the streets, they're all green. I don't get it. <laughs> I can't tell you how this works or how that's supposed to work. No clue. We'll try through as we play a little bit more, uh, figure it out. But for the moment, I'm just, pfft, I'm stumped. Like everyone can reach it. Everyone can walk there. Everyone can drive there. It has a big parking lot. Just, I don't know why everyone is so weird about it. <laughs> All right, let's fill in some more blanks here with uh, some low density housing around our commercial zones. Might even put some there. Uh, definitely on the edge. You might consider leaving some of the wooded area, not just for uh, forestry, the industry, but actually for people to have, because that increases the happiness, which makes a lot of sense. We can, of course, plant trees, but now if you plant trees like that, they are not going to count toward uh, forestry. So you can't plant trees yourself with that and then harvest them. That doesn't work. You can only harvest actual real forests that are already on the map, which, I mean, it makes some sense balancing wise, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. So let's throw a bunch of trees because they take a long time. To grow so we'll just cover all this up paint it around uh let's mix it around a little bit with some various trees and plants and all that kind of stuff we'll just boop, 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 go around it costs us a little bit but honestly it's not too bad so these will grow over time and we'll get a nice forested area and they're going to fill in all those little gaps here you know like this stuff here it's going to grow out and, and people are going to be happy about it because that is a thing uh Tree happiness. I'm sure there's a word for oh. Okay, that's new. I've never seen that. What is going on here? The American economy just experienced a depression and people are living their best life by painting this house black. Now this is some weird cloud shadow or something. I have no idea what this is now. Never seen that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, one thing, if you do get it, you have to go into the options. You have to go to gameplay and you... No, wait, it's not gameplay. It's in general. You have to turn on autosaves. It's not in there uh, by default. Set it to nothing too much. Nothing too crazy because every time it autosaves, especially later, like the game's just going to stop for two seconds or something, which isn't bad, but uh, yeah, it can get on your nerves, I'd say. I like that our uh, graveyard gives us some plus three indoor recreation and well-being. I mean, generally graveyards are kind of nice, you know, if, if they're well maintained and you walk through there, though I'm very impressed by the amount of benches in here. Like, it's basically one bench for every three graves so people really can go sit and stare at their diseased relatives if they want to. Like, there's nothing stopping them from it. There's more benches in here, almost as many benches as, as there's graves. And there's a moose walking through the graveyard. Does it have a name? No. Can I give it a name? Yes. Um, oh, there's a whole family of moose. 
that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be called Jose. And you're going to be Carlita. And you're going to be... You're going to be Klaus. Now, do these have a life cycle, I wonder? Like, will we, in a few years, see them again and click on them and know, oh, these are the moose we knew? Or will they die and will they only be ever moose again? <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is going to have any impact on our city. So, uh, more, more demands are rolling in because people are never happy about anything ever. Uh, line always must go up as we all know so let's throw in some more let's see i think this is some more medium density housing because we're going to build out in this direction so this is still kind of the central area of everything here and we're not going to go in this direction too much like this is basically the industry cutoff this road here and you can see also um, the road indicate where you can put stuff. So the, down here you shouldn't put them. Right now no one's too upset about being on industry. It's still okay. But they're going to complain even though it doesn't show yet. Not yet. Uh, something you also might notice. Some of these plots don't immediately start building. That's when you oversaturated the demand. Uh, you can leave them open or you can just replace them with something that is actually in demand. So we'll put down some low density over here. And now we have to build out a little bit more, but let's build some more industry first. Let's get some more of that satisfied because this is also what brings us the money at the end of the day. And eventually we want to have some money. <laughs> would, be, would be nice. Would be nice to have some money eventually. Let's see. Um... So I used to build like commercial zones. I always figured, okay, people are just going to go there. All right. Hearses. Also still a problem in, in City Skylines too. We definitely have enough. We have two out of 12 gathering. Two out of 12. We have one person in the graveyard. Why is no hearse coming? You know, it, it says it's gathering. It's coming. But it's literally going from here to there to here to there. How is that taking so long? It's now arriving, but this also keeps popping up. And um, I don't know. Later on, you can get like a center for disease control and stuff. So sometimes I have a feeling there is like a mass die off because of some disease. And since I turned off uh, Chirper, because boy, how do you use that thing annoying? Um, maybe I don't, I don't get these events, but uh, yeah. Death care and health care are my main gripes. Traffic control chef's kiss this is good it got everything you need already i don't think there's much more you you would want out of it honestly so speaking of which <laughs> uh, i'm considering can we build highways yet no we can only build bigger roads so this is already looking like okay this we're gonna need bigger roads here um we could upgrade it with one that has specific turning lanes, you know, so more incoming traffic. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and build them. For now, it's fine what's going on. But this is already looking like something that's possibly going to be a problem eventually. So we'll we'll try and do our best here. So uh, commercial zones, people are wanting commercial zones. OK, let's give them a little bit more stuff places to buy stuff uh maybe over here but we're still gonna paint it in small things one big thing maybe and some more small things next to it yeah i see it doesn't need much to decrease the demand it immediately shoots up again but it's fairly simple So we'll fill in some more of that. This is early game. That's what you do. Build more commercial zones. We could build like a 
a, a thin barrier of commercial zones here and then put some more housing there. So any ground pollution and stuff goes into the commercial zones rather than here. But it, it's, it's fairly extensive. It goes big. I really don't know what that is. <laughs> Maybe it's because it turned off depth of field that the black stuff is kind of odd. Or it's just one of those catastrophes I don't know about yet. I've only seen hurricanes, yeah. Or, uh, but what we can do is uh, let's connect this power line here with the second output of our energy station here. Just so we have a little bit more energy flow everywhere and potentially avoid bottlenecking. And we can already build up this road a little bit more. Let us. Like that. Another thing that I think is actually worthwhile now, as, as compared to uh, City Skylands 1, is not building in a grid. I think you get more out of it now um, than you used to. Because due to how the tiling works, smaller irregular tiles can actually very be very beneficial because they provide a larger variety of things to rent and live in and shops and stuff. So uh, I think that that is no longer a detriment. It used to be more of one, I feel. Okay, so nothing is being built here because we have no connection there. So that's fine. We could potentially try and put a little park here eventually. Or even not, not there. You can't build on these uh, pedestrian pathways, which is why I really like these uh, pedestrian streets. Because you can still build on these. And uh, you still have the majority of foot traffic going on rather than anything else. So this is why I really, really enjoy these. For what they are but you know for for high traffic areas you can't do that or you shouldn't do it anyway let's see let's build some more stuff let's get some more people in here We're still growing properly properly big let's build some minor outcroppings here you know just get some alleys. It's the smallest type of road next to the dirt road. So build these on the edges here. And now we got some more people to put there. And we can also go ahead. This is going to take away a little bit of what we can build. But now we have a cute looking cul-de-sac. You know, a little turning area. It's a little bit sad that you can't build on these, but... I get it. There needs to be limits. So now we have some more people moving in there. Filling in the cul-de-sacs. And we could even go down there. Connect that. But I'm fine with that. It's okay. Okay, so new things to unlock. Uh, large roads, I feel. could we, Honestly, it's it's now it gets difficult. Now it gets hard to decide what should be the next thing. Uh, crematorium is good. Definitely something to get early. Uh, incinerator plant could help, but honestly, we're going to go with the college. Why the college? Ah, well, college and another thing because we can afford it. Let's go college and roundabouts. So we get a little bit more variety in roundabouts, larger ones. Education is the thing. The absolute thing. You need to educate your people or you're going to have trouble later on. Um, it's very expensive to do. It's very expensive to do, but you need it early uh, and a lot of it. So first things first, we're going to build an elementary school. And being the good city planners we are, we're going to put it right there. where people. <laughs> uh, We're going to put it somewhere sensible, halfway sensible. Like this is going to be built out to be more uh, people living areas. Now, these municipal buildings, uh, they can be upgraded. And some of the upgrades take some more space. So leave space around these. Or at least space you can build on. Like, Don't put it like that next to another building that you would have to move. Uh, but surround it with housing that you can tear down to expand these. So we're going to put down an elementary school. We're going to put down a high school right 
across from it, but we'll pull it out a little bit like that. Now this one here, we can see it complains immediately about not having road access on this end. Sometimes they have multiple. So do keep that in mind. We'll pull this out a little bit further like that. And we start building out this grid a little bit. So pull these regular roads. Pull them up like that. Up to here. Pull that over. And uh, Okay, that's a little bit uneven, but that's okay. I don't mind. As Bob Ross likes to say, happy little accidents. Like if, if, it's looks, if it looks a little bit organic. Yeah, I can see way back there. I can get the perfect... You know 90 degree angle but if it's a little bit off it has a it has its own charm now we got more roundabouts so we can get bigger ones which is important later but if you build them early like so uh you won't have as much issues with needing to tear down stuff to upgrade them so this one here definitely needs to be big that's our biggest income uh, road where most people come through so we definitely want to upgrade that one for sure. For sure. All right, let's build some more uh, pedestrian walkways there before we keep building up. I'll just take this, pull it all the way through up to the end here. And we'll add a few more walkways like that. Just in between, just a few. make them uneven a little bit again if you're if your tiles here break up a little bit that's not bad that's not the end of the world you might even want that if you're a little bit like me and it helps okay now we build some bigger ones where actually service vehicles can pass if they need to so now we got access for walking to the schools this one might be a little bit cramped Honestly, this might not work out. Uh, so let's remove this road here. And replace this. This road with, an, with a regular road. Rather than a pedestrian one. Again, I'm, I'm removing that basically because I want to be able to build out on these upgrades. See? And you can't only build them on the edges. Uh, and you can't stack them either. So if I build this, which is kind of expensive, but it's fine. I can't build one over here. It has to touch the edge. So keep that in mind. And some of these go out far, you know. So this would fit perfectly here, but again, that's a that's a T section uh, crossing. We we don't necessarily want that. Plus we can build something here with zoning. We can't build anything here because this is just a walkway. So we can build it here without losing much of anything. And the same goes for the uh, college, you know. Something that definitely is worth it early on, despite the high cost, is um, providing with better chances of graduating. You don't need to have much in terms of uh, space, but if they have a better chance to uh, graduate, that is important. Now, the sports field here is a cosmetic thing, kind of like uh, auto recreation. People are just going to be happy about it. Could do it. Uh, but we're kind of building it straight into the forest. So if we put it like that, we keep the forest and we get the field. Um, it's expensive. But again, early on, you're probably not going to deal too much with money problems. Now, something to consider here, if you care about these things, uh, you could flatten out the terrain. You do that here. And make it a little bit more even. So building doesn't doesn't do this sloping thing here, you know. Uh, personally, I don't mind too much. But if you build, you can turn on this, the contours, so you get an idea. You know, so this is very flat. This here is a slope. This goes up and down. So um, if we saw that while building, we could consider that and flatten it out before people move in and build weird stuff. And it looks kind of odd. But... I don't know. I like it. Um, there is the smoothing tool here. Soften. So once you already got a weird edge like this one here, that, that's a little bit strange, you know. 
Like there's just this edge there. It's not unnatural yet, but if you don't like it, you can go with a higher brush strength and just try and get that lower. Works. Ish. It's fair enough. Ish. So we got a new spot out here. Again, we're not going to do anything with those T sections. They're fine. We might consider putting down a uh, roundabout here, but since we built this like that, we can't. That's why we try and avoid uh, T sections right there. But that's not too much of a problem. All we need to do to keep this one running smoothly is we're going to go ahead and select our road tool. We'll select this one and just uh, forbid left turns. Uh, right, yeah, left turns. So that way, this is going to go much smoother already. And we're going to remove the, uh, the lights. We're going to remove the lights here as well and just put down stop signs. And the small ones, we definitely don't want uh, lights. That's just a little bit too much of a hassle. People can just wait. Let's be honest. People that walk bring time, generally. All right, would we want, okay, let's do something cute. Uh, let's go and upgrade with grass and trees. We can do that now. So we upgrade, boop, boop, boop. You have to go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Uh, otherwise you only upgrade one side of the road, which you can do. And I think that's a, that's a good option. I just wish it were a little bit easier to uh, do it on both sides. And what it does is it kicks out people parking. So you get a nicer looking area. So now we put down grass and we can put trees on top. Now you get actual alleys. If you want them. You know. And it's right there. Base game. No add-on, no mod. Just right there. So our main road, or one of our main roads, is just an alley. And these will grow eventually. They start out small, but, but they grow. And then you got a really nice, nice little road here. Okay, last thing we need to build is a college. Now these have been the bane of my existence next to, uh, next to healthcare because I had capacity that never really filled up, but I had so many people eligible. Look at this. We start out with 215 people eligible for college, 215, because most people moving in obviously would be older, uh, so. Yeah, no. We'll have to keep that in mind. We already built a roundabout here, so we can safely put it right there. That's fine. And that costs us too much. Now we might go bankrupt. But we're very close to a level up, so I'm not too worried. But the college is super expensive, but I don't think you really have much of a choice. You need to start super early on that. So let's see. Now we're losing 181,000 per month. You should be bankrupt soon. <laughs> We should be bankrupt soon. Let's see how it goes. I think maybe what plays into it, like the low speed, it ticks in minutes. So getting through a month, it's 24 hours, basically. 24 hours in-game time is a month in-game. So once we reach 24, that's done. But we just got 800,000 for unlocking the next milestone. So, yeah, okay. It's going to be a problem. Don't make no mistakes there, but... Uh, we might have the next level until that happens. So I, d I don't worry too much about all this. Right, uh, let's get some more people in here. And we'll go with our edge policy. So all these smaller ones become this. Uh, we unlocked some new services, which will cost us even more money, but we'll definitely build them. Let's get a firefighting station somewhere out on the on the side here, maybe like more toward the industry bit, because that's, you know, 
if there's going to be a fire. Probably both sides are kind of likely to happen. And we want to have a police force and I tend to like to put them next together, next to each other. So we'll just put them like here. That's going to be fine. So these cost a lot of money to build. They cost a lot of money to maintain. Uh, another thing that we just got is a different type of medium density housing. So right now, medium density housing is row houses. So they just build these rows and rows and rows. But this is medium density. So uh, we'll put a medium density there because we built out the elementary school with these add-ons already. So we know that we can use these squares up. And medium density housing in this size uh, generates a lot of uh, commerce opportunities. So we're going to put a big commerce there and um, another medium density housing like that there. And they're going to be taller as well. They're going to be bigger. They go high up. We need some more industry. So we will build out some of the open areas that we have ready for that. And we'll continue the game. Now we unlocked the uh, two things, the specialized industry for um, zoning and the uh, specialized industry area tool. Not yet for districts. Districts is one level away, but let's check this out real quick. So we have specialized industry. If we want to do farming, for example, with uh, livestock, this is a little bit misleading because uh, it highlights this yellow area. But for livestock, you don't even need anything that is colored in. So we could start livestock farming right over there, uh, which honestly we're going to do, and it would work. Um, another thing is uh, potentially, let's check, can we see all the natural resources yet? Yes. Okay, so the green trees is what you can chop. That is what you can chop down. But only the green trees. Only them. Uh, you can see all these trees that we planted. These are just gray dots. They don't count. Uh, so seeing this is kind of important about how you plan your city. Uh, we're going to get some livestock farming. But we're not going to put it where we're going to lose too many trees. So we're going to put it like here. Again, livestock farming. It doesn't tell you this, but it doesn't actually need any uh, coloration on the map. So this is the weirdest darn tool. Once you set it, just right click immediately. So you go out of the out of the setting thing. I'll show you how this works in a moment. This this took me way too long to figure out. Now I like to put down an alley uh, in front of these uh, these, but you could also use a regular road, and then do something a little bit cute. So put this down, and we want to find this area there. Can we get a nice ninety degree? Yep, we can. So connect these up. So, okay, let me show you. So you click this and you click that. And on the back, you have this green area that you're now going to pull out. And everywhere you click and pull, you're going to get a new one of these angle points. And I'm going to show you on this road here what that means. So we're going to pull it down toward where the road ends. You can't really see it right now because it has this weird highlight moon. But if we turn it off, pressing I. So to get around here, we have to pull a new point. But since we don't have any area over here yet, it goes like, oh, you can't do that. It's an invalid shape. So what you're going to do is pull out on this end first, basically. And then you can do this. And then you can go all the way to the road and, and get a full line here. That's how that works. Took me forever to figure out. And when it starts, it has both edges active at once. So it's even more confusing to, to handle. I, I really recommend just once you get it, go right click and uh, select the thing directly and then set these. Now something, this this annoys me a little bit because it's a, it's a round shape. And setting a polygonal round shape, I mean, obviously every, every round is just a lot of polygons with a lot of edges. I understand that. But this is so much work. This takes so much time every single time you do this. Every single time. Also, 
look at how it says in the tooltip harvestable resource zero zero kilogram. It's it's a lie. It's a lie. I'll show you <laughs> once we build. So what I th what I said earlier with we're gonna do something cute is we're gonna not build it fully. We're gonna build it like that. So now we can put houses here, and I think that's cute. You know, you have this farm and there's people living and maybe even a little shop or two. You know, gets gets real the the rural feeling kind of. Uh, so we'll do that. Let's put down a little shop and another little shop and the rest is going to be low density housing that we fill in there. Yep. Yep. I just think it's cute. So we built this now. I'm going to show you how it's a lie that this has zero livestock. Uh, for now, the company has no one working there. So we have to wait until the company actually starts. Okay, so they have uh, a lot of open positions now, obviously. They just started. But look at that. The only problem they have is that they don't have enough employees right now. That's that's the only thing affecting their efficiency. They are producing. I don't know why that is the way it is. It's confusing. It makes no sense. But there you go. So why do we even need this? Um, we don't see it yet. But our people use raw materials, and if they have to buy it, you get less money from them, basically. And if you produce more raw materials than you need in your city, it is going to be exported. So um, you make more money. Basically, what I'm saying is <laughs> build some raw material as well. But be mindful of where you want to put it, um, because, of course, you don't want industry right next to it to pollute the ground or anything. But these are things to remember. What What is that? Is that a highway? Yeah. Aspen Highway. Okay. So we could even add another highway entrance right there. Interesting. Should we? I mean, why not? It's right into the industrial zone. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build a big roundabout there. Right there. Uh, roundabouts, you can't just set them down. It has to be on a road. So you need a road already. And now we're just going to take one of our big roads. Uh, one with a divider, so they don't do weird little turning maneuvers that, that they really like to do. I'm going to pull it all the way down here. All the way around along there. I'm going to connect it up there. And that's that. So here we got some people living in the water. <laughs> that is not really useful for us. So we're going to go and actually hide this. Here, I definitely recommend decreasing this a lot because this tool is strong. And you can see how it lags. Like, this this is performance. This is just, it, it lags. So you get this lovely stuff because you can't really control it much. So now you need to soften tool and pull this up to full strength so you can even this out a little bit. And it takes forever to do this. Get the highs down first, then it's easier to get these weird edges soften out. But do be a little bit careful so you don't immediately turn it all into water again. And that removes the water from our building possibilities. So that's a little bit better now. Okay, so we got another spot for industry vehicles coming in here, meaning this is going to be a problem. So let's throw a roundabout right there before people build up too much. Yeah, 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 you dislike what I did. It's fine. You're going to have to deal with it. Could throw some small roundabouts here uh, just to speed it up slightly. The traffic there. Don't necessarily need it on this end, but, you know, while, we, while we're at it, while we're already here, we do it. Now, this is a bit ugly, you see? This I get. This this isn't this isn't looking too attractive. So we're not going to build this out much at the moment because it's already costing us an arm and a leg. So let's just build a little bit more. It's time at this point to maybe check our electricity. Still fine, and we're exporting electricity a whole lot. So that's going to be a big chunk of our income right now. If we look at services, oh, actually it isn't. Um, we can increase the service fees a little bit. This reduces the efficiency of everyone. And we can reduce the budget because we're overproducing like crazy. 
So if you put this down to 70%, we're still gonna be fine. And eventually we might start making money from it. Just remember putting these down is gonna be <laughs> you know, a problem. Look at our money graph. This is where we leveled up. <laughs> ah, good stuff. All right, we could set very individual tax rates. Uh, you can open these and set it very inv individu individually. So let's go a little bit like that. So if you're highly educated, 14, a third, do, 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 like that, like a little staircase, basically. 12 and uneducated, we leave as it is. Commercial. Um, you can kind of decide what you want in your city by setting tax rates. The higher the tax rate, the less people are going to be there doing that thing. Of course, we are greedy. So we're going to be like, oh, look, there's a lot of that. So if we increase here, we don't need to increase a lot to get a uh, high impact. Uh, we don't want plastics in our city. We increase it by a lot. They, they're they not going to come because it's too expensive to be here. We want a lot of food in the city. We decrease it. You know, people are going to come. People are going to do that. We don't want fast food. Increase it. Like that. So, alrighty. Uh, we unlocked a new level. Uh, so we can build new stuff. What should we do next? Water treatment plant, crematorium, hospital... Recycling. I shy away from recycling early on because it's just it's it's a lot of uh, money. It's it's very costly running recycling, very very costly. So it might not be a good idea yet. Um, a fire station. Maybe emergency shelters. Maybe. I honestly don't know quite exactly how they work. Um, to me, it feels like. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna unlock these and we're gonna build one just so I can show you why I think why uh, what they do. I've seen one tornado pass through a city so far, and I had shelters down beforehand. And if you go to the emergency services thing to shelters like this, and you put it down and just turns the whole road green except for right there in the back, right? So what I think what they are doing is um, basically everything that's on a green road now is protected. So if, the, because the hurricane went through and nothing, nothing was destroyed, nothing on the green stretches was touched at all. So I'm thinking having this there is probably enough to prevent any or all damage, basically. So, um, yeah, that's how these work, I think, because I don't think anyone has to actually go there. Oh, uh, more efficient air circulation, more people can take shelter. Okay, uh, 1,000 people can go in there. Extended people can stay longer. All right. That's a lot of money, though. So we're not going to do that yet. Let's check our medical services. Okay, so 12 people are working here. Fully stocked, 170%, uh, 107%. No people in use. Let's check this. It's so noisy. Education is great. Let's see. People are going to start being annoyed with the health. I'm sure. <laughs> we'll see it. I'm very paranoid about that yet uh, already. Okay, let's uh, get some more people in here because people want more people places. Uh, so we'll add some more. See how the big medium house is generating this area when we look at uh, commercial. So color for commercial equals good because people here want to buy stuff. So we're gonna put some more commercial there, right here, like so. And the rest, we're gonna put uh, medium housing on this edge here. And now we're gonna fill in the rest. But you're also gonna see now, or soon, that people are not gonna like that too much. We'll leave this open for parks and stuff once they come available to us. So these large free areas aren't necessarily a problem. They needn't be a problem. These are nice to put in parks or plant trees and all that kind of stuff. We can't put anything here, so we're just going to plant more stuff. We'll just go ahead and put the brush and do this a bunch. Get a variety going. Ah, there we go. So this will be a nice wooded area eventually. 
this this will look good. All right. Let's check here. So commercial uh, demand, local demand, high skill labor availability, labor availability, gas station availability, hotel demand. So people want these things. And I think you have to do a lot more micromanaging on these now. So we have to kind of figure out what size of lot. To oh God. Oh no. I accidentally removed that. Uh, we have to learn which size of lot is what basically. So this here is a plastics selling company. What, what does that mean? What are you selling? Is it just literally like a chunk of plastic you can go by there? What is that? Beverages, plastics, beverages, food and meals. So this here is something to eat in. That's a three, two by three. So let's build some more commercial around here, right there. We'll get this tool here. And we'll want this edge and this plot and this and this. All this is going to be commercial. And then around that, we build some more housing. And we fill that in. So the low density housing doesn't really help with uh, commercial demand. So our traders eventually are going to be annoyed. Now this is the one I accidentally overwrote. So let's destroy this so other people can get going building their houses there because I accidentally put a housing plot there. <laughs> um, honestly, let's let's put the commercial back. I'm so sorry, people. I'm so, so sorry. So eventually people are going to be complaining about, no, no, we don't have enough X or Y. But that's okay. Can't have everything. So let's check our high school. There's not a lot going on there. This is, I mean, this looks fine. This looks fine. But tell you what. We have 310 people eligible, but only 65 attending. At least our capacity is in the green for once. So I'll try and keep it that way, because if you don't have educated workers, you're not going to make a lot of money. You definitely need them. It's a big, 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 big early investment, but you need it. And it's something to absolutely keep up with. So like unlocking the university is a sensible idea, though looking at the cost, eh, we can't buy that yet. Just building it costs us 1.5 million. Eventually we will, but not now. Okay, something we can't look at. Can we look at it yet? Production? No, sad. Can't see this production yet, but let's see. Can we build some more interesting? No, only this and some stone mining. Now, stone, stone mining is going to look ugly as heck. Um, but it produces some good income early on. Honestly, we could go ahead and build us some more, uh, buy us some more area. These are really expensive as well. Uh, they they grow more expensive, obviously. Uh, oh, very good. A signature building unlocked. But let's grow this a little bit. If you select more than you want, you can just right click it to unselect it again. So now we've got a little bit more space to go. And let's get to the signature building. So we got this pop musician mansion. Uh, which gives plus two well-being within 500 meters. So we can just plop that down somewhere. Ideally somewhere we haven't built anything yet and ideally somewhere where we're probably not going to need to upgrade or build anything much. So we just put it there and people can be happy around this pop star living there with them, basically. Right. What else? Ah, right. I wanted to check here. But I think we'll just wait for the next level up before we build anything special. So instead, let's push out some more uh, industry because that's what the people are clamoring for. And we could, let's build out this industry zone a little bit more sensibly with more roads and stuff. So we'll keep it away from here, behind the graveyard, basically. 
So pull this through to here, this through to here, and this through to here. And build these out a little bit, like so. And so, and that looks all kind of horrible, but that's okay. Let's build a bigger road to catch all this stuff without a divider. So just build this up to here. And now we bring in these to connect up. So it almost looks intentional. Almost like we wanted this. And again, think of the roundabouts where there's potentially going to be a lot of traffic, especially industrial traffic, because it's big. And maybe throw something, especially on the T-junctions, it's sensible. And that is fine. Let's pull out more of our pedestrian walkways that we have been putting down here. Uh, okay. Aligned down to there. This one doesn't get one, but we could just run across once. Like so. So people have some ways to get around. You lose some building spots. But I'm fine with that. It's a price I'm willing to pay. All right. Let's build some more industry. Now you can put some commercial zones in here as well. They will work. But do it sparingly. Just generally be very specific about where you want to put your commercial stuff. Just really think about it. Don't just put it anywhere in large numbers. These are best used sparingly in my experience so far. And if it's if you lose a little bit of building space, that's fine too. All right, okay. So you can start seeing now that the industry is getting denser and denser, people don't want to live there anymore. They would still be fine living on the edges, fine-ish. But the more industry we build like that, the less they're going to like it. You know what? Um, people in denser housing are a little bit more resilient to it. But you can see it starts creeping and growing out. So this is not going to be fine for... Oh, <laughs> it just keeps popping around. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So let us instead... Go and fill this and some more. So we're looking for low density housing. Low density housing it will be. Right there. Some more people move in. And every time you build housing, this is still the same as it is in uh, City Skylines 1. A lot of people are going to come by road to try and get into the city. To try and get to the new places. So keep that in mind. as the blackness takes over everything again. Luckily, the blackness is simply dispelled by changing your perspective. Slightly. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. Maybe one of the graphical settings we changed. Oh, I put dense housing here. Whoops. But it's fine. Everyone's kind of living there, chilling there. So this thing is happily producing. It does give some noise uh, pollution, but very low, so people will probably still be fine with it. We're losing money still, to no one's great surprise. And here you can see all the people wanting to move in now. We might upgrade this to highways, honestly, but we don't have them unlocked yet. Because there's people parking and it's just slow. But no traffic jams just yet. 
still flowing pretty decently. I really love the roundabouts. Man, how how many hours have I spent in uh, City Skylines 1 building or trying to build roundabouts? I never really got the hang of it. It always looked horrible. And it never really worked. These are just amazing stuff. So well thought out. Really well built. So people cup coming in. Still housing and commercial zone demands. So let let's give them what they're what they're clamoring for. Some commercial zones around the college. Makes sense to me. They probably want to sell some stuff here. And some here. Like that. And the rest is gonna be housing. I honestly quite like that a mix of things is a much better thing now. I quite like that. And it keeps the effects down as well. If you put a lot of commercial next to a lot of commercial, the noise pollution is going to be much, much larger in that zone. Rather than if you put a little bit sparingly here and there. So if you look at like this thing here, which sells plastics, <laughs> uh, they don't have enough employees is their main issue. And they're looking for poorly educated. Okay, the hearse issue again. Uh, there is one already on the road to it. I wish it were highlighted. It would be so cool, like on a uh, live tracking for your shopping, uh, for your delivery seeing where they are, if they're already coming. And we have a size now where people might be using our uh, walkways and stuff, so I want to have a little check. See, there's some people walking. <laughs> now, something to consider... Uh, which I like to do because it, it looks cute and it's fun, is build a bridge over here and connect over there. I think that might be good because this is a little bit far away from everything. You have to walk very far and we have this little roundabout. Now, you can't connect to a roundabout properly with these, sadly. You can't go like this. This breaks the roundabout in my experience. So if you go to the edge, that's fine. But <laughs> look at this. It's just horrible. So going like this, you can see the connection being made. That works. So we'll build over here. And we start going up by pressing page up. Or you can use these buttons over there. Now we just need to kind of find, okay, the slope is too steep. All right, fine, 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 fine. Okay, uh, we have to go back a little bit to remove this bit. And page down to connect. And page up because this is where we want to go. We want to go up. And there we go. So we built over like this. And now we go down again. And we give it a bunch to go down so it looks halfway symmetrical. And we walk over here. And we connect up there. So now people can just walk right over there. And we can now we can't upgrade this sadly. Uh, to a covered bridge. Well, the edges we can, but not this. So up on here, you don't get any, you don't get any cover. <laughs> All right, okay. It's a weird little bridge, but it's my weird little bridge. So that's fine. Maybe someone uses it, maybe not. I don't mind too much. I just like doing these uh, these connections at the edges and everything. Okay, so they're all out gathering. They're all running around. There's one. This is the Where's Waldo of Death Care. But it's, I don't know. It's so weird. They're not over capacity. They have no problems. Either this pops up real quick. 
you know? Or there's some bug there. I tend to ignore it for this reason, because it seems to work. I just don't give it much heat, and it doesn't seem to be a problem either. Long term. So, what else we got? We're looking for a next level up, so... Uh, signature building is built. We could build some rock industry. Like somewhere out there. Uh, but there's a road, so that would uh, diminish how much we can do. Let's build it like that. And if you look real close, um, there's like a square at the edge of it, at the end edge. That's where you pull out the thing. And in the front, to the left, you can see the little road sign. It's very hard to see. So we turn it, holding down right click, uh, because we want to attach this. No, actually, we're going to turn it like that. So the roadway kind of points in that direction down there. Eh, like that. Now, I don't mind if you don't fill up the full circle, so that's okay. Just put it like this. And again, we right click out of that and we'll build the road immediately connecting it up. And this looks ugly as hell. Like that is just, I don't know what they were thinking when they built that. That is just really bad. All right, so we're connecting. And now we build out this area again, doing this, which is kind of annoying to do. So let's pull these out. This is kind of how I start these just pull out the big sides first basically and like that here we can't go outside of our coverage of what we own so we're kind of stuck there that's fine I know it doesn't look too bad but Boy, is this annoying if you do it a lot. So here to align this, there's a little bit of a uh, it's a little bit of a trick you need to do. So you need to make sure that you pull one of these points directly to the to the point on the other end. Otherwise, these are gonna overlap and you can't pull them very well together. So each edge, each corner here, needs to be hit by a node from the other one. Luckily, this isn't too hard to achieve. But if you don't do that, it's going to be a nightmare to try and cover and, and connect these. So here we want to be sure up there. We're not covering anything there. So instead of going down this way, oh, we built the road a little bit too far out. Uh, let's remove this bit. We don't really need it. And it's blocking our way right now. Like, look at this. Look at this. This is all it's going to be. I swear. It's the ugliest thing. It's just so horrible. All right. So we're going to pull this out to the road. And I don't want anyone living here, honestly. I don't want to put that on anyone. Overlapping items, yeah, sure. So we need to pull in one here and pull it over there. Oh, trust me. They could have given it a little hill or something. Yeah. Oh, trust me. This is going to look worse when it's done. This is going to look even worse. Okay, we're done now. So you just wait. You just wait. It's going to look so much worse. It's already ugly, you know. But this is just the cherry on top. You get these huge machines and they do nothing. They just run around on the flat surface here, and that's it. It looks so bad. <laughs> they sure be chilling, but they never, they never dig anything. It's. Sh I appreciate that there's no resource depletion or anything. I di I don't like that in games, so I appreciate that that isn't here. But yeah, it's just so sad. Just. It's so boring. 
It's so bad. Like the most exciting thing about this whole thing is the fence. Like that is the coolest thing. It's just, yeah, you got, it's, it's so sad. And the same here with the chicken, you know, uh, with the livestock. They got these areas there where there's livestock, you know, like there's cows and chicken and we can give them names and everything. That's very cute. But what is this? Ignoring the pop in back there. But what is this? Why does this look like that? <laughs> Why? I don't get it. And it's sad. Because they could have done that so much better. I'm very convinced they could have done this so much better. It's just... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This looks literally like uh, what, what, what I would do as well. If I made my own repeating pattern texture, that's, that's what it would turn out like. <sighs> Man. This is depressing. Depressing to look at. It is what it is. As the kids say, right? It is what it is. All right, okay, let's put some more commercial zone in here, over there. Some smaller ones for some gas stations. Something bigger for maybe a store or so. Ah, oh, man. What are they building here? Okay, so no one's moving in on the high density here. On the medium density so we're just going to replace it with a left click with low density and it's going to be fine so these are pay are selling textiles more textiles and this is the plastics store where you buy plastics <laughs> i don't get it what is the plastics store supposed to be uh could build a mausoleum here for sightseeing. But it costs a lot of money per month upkeep. Let's build it though. And we can build this thing where people can go and pay reverence to the deceased. I'll put it right there in the forest. Now we're going to put it on the other side here. So this is another thing on, on how they modeled all this. Uh, how do I close that? Escape. Escape. The edges. What is this? Why? It's fine if it's, it's in something, you know, if there's other things attached to it. But if it's just out there like that. And you can't even build roads to it, I don't think. Like, you can't attach these. See, it says it overlaps. You can turn off the snapping there. But you're not... See, when it tries, when it tries to snag to it... Nope, overlapping. Overlapping. <sighs> but again, listen to the sounds. Click to start. This is a little bit too hectic. This could be like slower. But then the right click. Listen to the right click. That's just so smooth on the brain. So soft and smooth. All right. Uh, this is it for, Chris uh, for City Skylines 2 for now, I would say. Uh, because it's about... 8 o'clock and this is when we start uh, Crusader Kings 2 so I'm just gonna quickly save this boy and we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the Crusader Kings 3 while we do that but I hope you got an idea if you're watching this on YouTube because I'm gonna send it over to YouTube uh, thanks for watching check out the Twitch too as well as all the other stuff if you're watching this on Twitch then let's get going <laughs>